What do you see? When asked to picture a planet, does your mind's eye conjure an image of Earth with its blue oceans and white flecks of clouds, or maybe Jupiter with its great red spot? For many people, the answer's simple. Saturn and its rings dominate the popular image of our solar system. Ever since Pioneer 11 first beamed back hazy images of a yellowish orb circled by bright bands, Saturn has become a byword for the wonders of space, an image so iconic that any kindergartner can see a picture of it know exactly what it is. Yet the famous rings, majestic as they are, are only the barest fraction of what makes the sixth planet so special. Colder than its sibling Jupiter, Saturn is whipped by ferocious storms that manifest on its surface in spectacular shapes, from great white spots, trailing patterns, to an eternal hexagon spinning forever at the planet's north. Well, today, astrographics, we're voyaging beyond the asteroid belt to meet this remarkable planet up close and uncover the science behind some of its iconic marvels. For some Saturn fans, it can seem like the sixth planet is always stuck playing second fiddle. The smaller of the two gas giants, Saturn is often cast in Jupiter's enormous shadow, lacking the awesome gravitational pull of the largest planet, lacking too the colorful surface that makes Jupiter so vibrant. In terms of NASA interest, Saturn has like Likewise suffered. While the king of planets has been visited by eight probes, with two more due in the coming years, Planet 6 has received half as many. Yet while a brief glance at these planetary siblings might conclude Jupiter is the dashing favorite, those who appreciate the quieter, understated things in life have no doubts. Far from being the Nars Crane of the planetary family, Saturn is, secretly, far cooler than its big brother could ever hope to be. And we mean that quite literally. With an average distance of 1.4 billion kilometers from the Sun, Saturn receives far less warming than Planet 5. Its colder atmosphere is thought to be one reason why it's comparatively featureless. Although we should point out here that cold is a very relative term. While the upper layers of Saturn's atmosphere are indeed chilly, clocking in at minus 173 degrees Celsius, that number rises the lower you go until it reaches levels best described as absolutely hellish. Unlike Earth, Earth, which, spoiler alert, has a solid surface, Saturn is a collection of swirling gases and fluids that descends to frightening depths. Frightening because the deeper you go, the more extreme the temperatures and pressures get. By the time you penetrate the layer of liquid metallic hydrogen surrounding the solid core, your thermometer would have peaked at 11,700 degrees Celsius, and you would be very, very dead. Interestingly, it's not just at its core where Saturn gets hot. Considering the extremely limited heat that it gets from sunlight, the planet emits a startling amount of it. According to Universe Today, quote, Saturn radiates 2.5 times more energy into space than it receives from the Sun. The reason for this is thought to be friction. Like Jupiter, Saturn is mostly made of hydrogen and helium. As the helium deeper inside the planet rises up in droplets into the hydrogen-rich upper atmosphere, it creates friction, releasing heat. Not that hydrogen and helium are the only molecules dancing around the planet's clouds, though. In the upper atmosphere, the two are joined by tiny traces of stuff like methane, ethane, ammonia, and even every barbecue fan's favorite, propane. But while it's tempting to imagine some alien Hank Hill up there extolling the virtues of Saturnian propane, the sad yet obvious truth is that there's nothing living in the planet's atmosphere. For the simple reason that it is utterly inimical to life. Saturn is whipped by the second fastest winds in the solar system, behind only those on Neptune, howling by at 500 meters per second. This means they're almost five times faster than an earthly hurricane. Up here, clouds of ammonia crystals bear witness to storms that could engulf our planet. Sporadic tempests known as white spots break out, hurling hundreds of lightning bolts a minute down towards the water vapor clouds far below. These nightmare storms are so fascinating that we'll be coming back to them in a later chapter. For now, though, we want to complete our general overview to finish sketching out the basic outlines of today's subject. One of those basic facts involves the planet's sheer size. While it pales in comparison to Big Daddy Jupiter, Saturn is still a beast. Nine times wider than Earth and about 95 times more massive, Planet 6 could fit our world inside it over 763 times. Not that all these Earths would be sat in a perfect sphere, though. Because it rotates so fast, completing a local day in just 10.7 hours, Saturn has a slightly weird shape, where it's flatter at the top and bottom and bulging in the middle. Bizarrely, though, if you were to somehow shrink this weird, bulgy orb down and toss it in a swimming pool, it would float. As NASA notes, this is because it's, quote, the only planet in our solar system with an average density that is less than water. Luckily, 
doing something like that is impossible. Not just because that would be an insane universe to live in, but also because if you were to somehow hurl Saturn into a pool, you'd end up waterlogging and destroying two of its coolest features. The features that we'll spend our next chapter exploring. The moons and the rings. Now, we humans have known for centuries that Saturn has plenty of groupies, moons orbiting adoringly around Planet 6 as it spins through the heavens. The giant Titan, a beast even larger than Mercury, was sighted as early as 1655. By the end of the century, another four had been added. By the time the Bill of Rights had been ratified, Mimas and Enceladus had joined this growing fan club. Come the end of the 19th century, the total number of known Saturnian moons would stand at nine. Yet it was only in this century that anyone realized how utterly mobbed the planet was. Like a rock god of yore, Saturn is currently thought to be circled by 146 devoted hangers-on, petite little moons spinning through the void beside their hero, the greatest number of any planet in the solar system. To be fair, some of these moons are basically glorified pebbles. Dozens are less than 10 kilometers in diameter, or what's known in Imperial units as laughably small. Many more clock in at under 50 kilometers. But there are at least 11 that break the 100 kilometer diameter range. In some cases, these larger moons are even big enough to have moons of their own. Strangely, this doesn't include the largest satellite of them all. Titan accounts for 96% of all mass orbiting Saturn, a monster so significant will doubtless one day dedicate an entire video to it. Yet it's the smaller Tethys and Dion which are each blessed with their own satellites, a pair of twins officially known as Trojan moons. Like Mimas and Enceladus, Tethys and Dion orbit within Saturn's vast E-ring and are therefore known as the inner large moons. Beyond the ring, Rhea, Lapidus, and Hyperion make up the outer large moons. Further out still, you get the irregular moons, which are divided into three categories, the Inuit group, the Gaelic group, and the Norse group. All three contained satellites that almost certainly did not form alongside Saturn, but were instead captured by its gravity eons ago. Many of them share characteristics. All the retrograde moons, that is, those that spin in the opposite direction to their orbit, are in the Norse group. The Gaelic group, meanwhile, are united by their position, inclination, and color. Taken together, the moons represent one of Saturn's greatest wonders, not just in the sheer number of them, but in their awesome variety. There's Enceladus, which contains a subsurface ocean that occasionally leaks out into space, Titan, which is the only body in the solar system aside from Earth to have lakes, rivers, and seas on its surface, albeit in this case lakes and rivers made from liquid methane, Rhea, which appears to be a gigantic ball of ice and has been described by NASA as a frozen dirty snowball. Still, let's be honest, for all the general amazingness of these satellites, they won't be the main thing space tourists are rushing to see. No, no, that of course will be the rings. In terms of wonders of the solar system, Saturn's rings are inarguably at the very top. A natural marvel so sublime, they make the Grand Canyon look like a muddy ditch with delusions of grandeur. Stretching hundreds of thousands of kilometers across, the multiple rings are identified by the letters A through G based on their order of discovery. Somewhat confusingly, this means the closest ring to Saturn is D, while the furthest away is E, with A sitting somewhere in the middle. Each varies wildly in size. If you were to pick up planet Earth with 12,742 kilometers and drop it in C, B, or A rings, it would be swallowed up. On the other hand, F ring is a mere 785 kilometers across about the distance from Houston, Texas to Memphis. Now contrast this with E ring. Formed by the water droplets spraying out of Enceladus's ocean, the diffuse E ring extends a staggering 300,000 kilometers. That's over twice as wide as Saturn itself. Yet, for all their extent, the rings are remarkably thin, delicate things that are an average of only 9 meters thick, with the bright B ring less than a meter thick in some places. As to what's making up these wonders, well, for the most part, it's shards of water ice, tiny, almost invisible shards spinning around Saturn in an eternal cosmic ballet. Or are they? Because as we're about to see, it seems there's nothing eternal about Saturn's rings. In fact, most scientists today suspect that they are doomed to vanish forever. Now, though it's obvious, oh, when you think about it, it can be weird to realize that through most of human history, nobody knew Saturn had rings. As the most distant planet visible to the naked eye, Saturn has been known to our species ever since the first caveman looked at the night sky and wondered what all those glowing dots were. But it wasn't until 1659 that Christian Huygens became the first person to suggest the sixth planet was surrounded by a ring. Just think, all those millennia, all those astronomers in places like Babylon, China, Greece, Mesoamerica, all of them as unaware of Saturn's greatest features as you are of individual planets in Andromeda. Even Galileo failed to realize what he was seeing were rings, instead thinking Saturn was accompanied by two unknown celestial bodies. 
It seems bizarre, doesn't it? Like imagining Spy Family without Anya, or Britain without the rain and the moaning. And yes, in the long term, a ringless Saturn may not be all that unusual. In the comparatively recent past, Planet 6 may have looked more like Jupiter, and the rings it has now may well soon disappear. The theory that Saturn's rings came late to the party is a result of them looking so spectacular. While Jupiter, Neptune, and Uranus all have their own ring systems, they're dark and dingy things. Rings that don't show up well in visible wavelength photos. By rights, Saturn should be equally dark. Our solar system is so full of grimy dust that over billions of years, it should coat any ring and make it dull and hard to see. The fact this hasn't happened suggests Saturn's system formed way after the planet itself. The current theory, proposed in 2022, holds that a moon called Chrysalis once orbited Saturn, but had its path disrupted as Titan slowly drifted towards the outer rings. Pushed onto a new course by Titan's immense mass, Chrysalis entered a death spiral. About 200 million years ago, Saturn's gravity tore it to shreds, shreds that eventually became the basis for the rings that we see today. If this hypothesis is true, then we just happen to be living in a charmed era for our solar system, like those ancients who, by accident of birth, were lucky enough to live in the short period when all original seven wonders were still standing. Had things played out slightly differently, Chrysalis would still exist, and everyone would be like, Saturn? Pfft, you mean David ever lasers? Or hey, what if things had gone the other way, and Chrysalis had gotten torn apart a hundred million years earlier? Well, in that case, by the time humanity evolved enough to build neat little things like digital watches and powerful telescopes, Saturn's rings might have already vanished. For this bleak, cosmic vision, you can thank planetary scientist James O'Donoghue. In 2012, the then doctoral candidate at the University of Leicester discovered a mechanism that allowed Saturn's gravity to capture huge quantities of material from the rings. A Smithsonian magazine explained, sunlight, as well as plasma clouds coming from tiny meteoroid strikes, was charging icy dust particles within the rings, allowing Saturn's magnetic fields to grab them. As the particles bounced and twisted along the lines, some of them got close enough to the planet that its gravity pulled them into the atmosphere. The result of this was ring rain. The process whereby between 432 kilos and 2,870 kilos of particles are lost from the rings and into Saturn's atmosphere every single second. And that's just the general rate of loss. Around Saturn's equator, the Cassini spacecraft found the amount of particles getting pulled down was closer to 10,000 kilograms a second. If that rate of decay stays constant, then scientists estimate Saturn's rings will drain away in the next 100 million years. In the grand scheme of things, these natural marvels may be no more permanent than a child's drawing etched into the sand on a beach before the tide comes in. Still, even when the rings finally vanish, Saturn will still be a place of wonders, two of the greatest of which can already be seen in the planet's hazy atmosphere. In December of 2010, the Cassini spacecraft orbiting Saturn picked up something weird in the cloud tops. Without warning, a large storm blew up in the northern hemisphere, a giant white, swirling mess of clouds and bursts of lightning. As the probe watched, the storm grew to over 19,000 kilometers wide, big enough to swallow the Earth and nearly have room left over for Mars. For the next several months, the storm traced a path through Saturn's skies. Everywhere it went, it left a trail of white streaks in its wake, like a shot of fresh milk swirling across the surface of coffee. From afar, it looked strangely beautiful. Inside, though, that would have been another story. At the storm's height, Cassini recorded lightning bolts more than 10,000 times as powerful as their earthly counterparts, crashing down at a rate of over 10 every second. For the astronomy community, the Great Saturnian Storm of 2010 was a true shock, not because we'd never seen such storms on Saturn before, but because it was so unexpected. Prior to this, we thought we'd unlocked the pattern of these storms, known as Great White Spots. Thought they came out every 30 years, like a less creepy version of Eugene Victor Tombs. But the 2010 storm had come a full decade early. And while that was fantastic, since it meant the Cassini probe was there to see it up close, it also raised an intriguing question. What had caused this once so reliable storm to arrive so far ahead of schedule? The first sighting of Saturn's great white spots came in 1876, when American astronomer Asaf Hall recorded one moving around the gas giant's equator for over a month. After that, the storm was spotted again in 1903, 1933, 1960, and 1990, with an unscheduled smaller storm appearing in 1994. Since Saturn orbits the Sun once every 29.5 Earth years, it was long assumed that the white spots were linked to the changing season. Sort of like how the monsoon is a defined event in the Indian calendar, running to a broadly regular schedule. But then the 2010 storm went in appeared a decade early, blowing that theory out of the water. 
This is even more intriguing, given we think we know what causes these great white spots in the first place. Saturn's outer atmosphere is less dense than the swirling mix of hydrogen, helium, and water below. But as it radiates its heat into space, it gets cooler and denser until it begins to sink. At that point, the warmer air bursts through, creating a titanic thunderstorm. A storm that lasts until enough water molecules have rained back down to return things to their natural state. Yet it also seems like there's a set amount of energy Saturn could produce in any given storm. In 2018, about right when the 2010 storm should have appeared, there was an outbreak of four small white spots on the planet's surface. At 8,046 kilometers across, these storms were enormous by Earthly standards. By Saturnian standards, though, they were mere squalls. Cassini Project scientist Linda Spilker explained to PBS Nova in this way. It seems the planet somehow stores up its energy for decades at a time before releasing it all at once. If that's the case, perhaps the 2010 Great preemptively depleted Saturn's cache of atmospheric ammo, undermining the more on schedule white spots of 2018. Fascinating as they are, though, these semi regular great white spots have nothing on Saturn's most long running storm, the Hexagon. So look, if you've ever got a little bit baked and Google funky pictures of Saturn, you might have had your mind blown by images of a hexagon spinning around the planet's North Pole. A 30,000 kilometer wide wavy jet stream surrounding an intense storm that stretches down for thousands of kilometers, the hexagon is fascinating because it's so rare to see such a regular shape in nature. No storms on Earth ever form into polygons. First detected by Voyager 1, the hexagon spent decades freaking the hell out of anyone who thought too hard about it. These days, though, we have a pretty good idea of the cause. Harvard research scientists Rakesh K. Yadav and Jeremy Bloxham seemingly solved the mystery in a 2010 paper for the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Reviewing their work, Universe Today summed it up in the following way. The simulation revealed that smaller storms in Saturn's atmosphere surround a larger horizontal jet stream blowing near the planet's north pole. The smaller storms interact with the larger jet stream system and, as a result, effectively pinch the eastern jet and confine it to the top of the planet. The pinching process warps the stream into a hexagon. The Yadav and Bloxham were able to reach this conclusion was thanks entirely to data captured by the Cassini probe that orbited Saturn from 2004 to 2017. And all of this brings us nicely to the final part of today's video, the one where we discuss the spectacular past and awesome future of missions to Saturn. So look, as we mentioned back at the start of today's video, the number of probes to visit Saturn is still kind of paltry. While Jupiter has welcomed eight spacecraft, with one more, the ESA's JUICE, on its way, and another, NASA's Europa Clipper, due to launch next year, Saturn has seen a mere four visitors. Of these, three came within just two years of another one. Pioneer 11 became the first probe to whiz past Planet 6 in 1979, followed by Voyager 1 in 1980 and Voyager 2 in 1981. For decades, the images taken in this narrow window were the only pictures we had of Saturn. Honestly, though, it's hard to blame NASA for focusing more on Planet 5. At 9.54 astronomical units from the Sun, with 1 AU being the distance from the Earth to our star, Saturn is nearly twice as distant as Jupiter. That extra travel time simply makes sending craft there a lot harder. The upshot is that when we do launch missions to Planet 6, we tend to make the most of it. Nowhere has this been clearer than during what may have been the greatest space mission of all time, Cassini Huygens. A joint project of NASA and the ESA, Cassini and Huygens were two $4 billion probes that blasted off in 1997 and finally reached Saturn together in 2004. There, the ESA's Huygens craft quickly completed its short yet spectacular mission. Descending onto the surface of the giant satellite Titan, it became the first probe to land on a moon other than our own. In doing so, it made discoveries about this strange world that we're still picking through today. Yet it was the Cassini craft that would truly transform our relationship with Saturn. Orbiting the gas giant from 2004 to 2017, Cassini allowed us to see our distant neighbor like never before. Thanks to Cassini that we saw the great white spot up close, that we uncovered the secrets of the hexagon, that we know the true rate which Saturn's rings are raining down into the atmosphere. Nor did the mission only focus on Saturn itself. During its long visit, the probe uncovered the hidden ocean below the surface of Enceladus, now one of the prime targets in the search for alien life. So when Cassini took its final bow in 2017, diving headlong to its destruction in Saturn's atmosphere, it was undoubtedly the end of an era. After 13 years, our direct link to Planet 6 had been severed. While Jupiter is still being orbited by the Juno craft, with Juice and Europa Clipper soon set to join it, Saturn now has no probes in its vicinity. Nothing to keep uncovering its secrets. Sadly, neither NASA, nor the ESA, nor any other space agency, like JAXA or Chinese CNSA, 
have any plans to go back. For a while after Cassini's demise, it looked like a mission known as Sprite might have a shot at securing funding. An acronym for the Saturn Probe Interior and Atmosphere Explorer, the craft would have been a dedicated mission to sample Saturn's atmosphere. To fly inwards on a suicide mission that would last a mere 90 minutes, but return unimaginable amounts of data from within the planet's cloud tops. Yet Sprite failed to get funded, whereas the Juno probe to Jupiter received the green light just two years after NASA's previous visitor, Galileo, ended its mission, and we're still waiting for a follow-up to Cassini over six years later. However, that doesn't mean humanity has given up on the broader Saturnian system. As you watch this, work is underway on a probe called Dragonfly. A quadcopter the size of a small car, Dragonfly will launch in 2027 on a mission to Titan. Arriving in 2034, it will spend roughly three years flying through the skies of this alien world, capturing stunning images of its hydrocarbon dunes and seas of liquid methane, hunting its shorelines for the building blocks of life. Nor is it the only mission eyeing up one of Saturn's moons. The 2023 Decadal Survey, setting priorities for NASA's next 10 years, placed heavy emphasis on a proposed mission to Enceladus. Known as the Enceladus Orbital Lander, the craft would first circle this small moon in Saturn's E-ring before dropping down to land on its surface. There it would examine molecules sprayed out from Enceladus' subsurface ocean to see if it might not hold evidence of microorganisms swarming and multiplying deep below the ground. Creatures that may have evolved within Saturn's embrace over a billion kilometers from Earth. While budget fights in the US Congress mean NASA has not yet been able to greenlight this probe, it's certainly seen as a priority. Hopefully, that will soon translate into a flow of dollars. As we can see then, exploration of Saturn is not dead. For all the current focus on Jupiter and Mars, there are still plenty of scientists out there who want to discover more about this distant gas giant. This distant world with its fascinating moons, miraculous rings, and closely guarded secrets. Because make no mistake, Saturn is one of the true gifts of our solar system. A place so strange and so wondrous, it seems like science fiction. We can only hope that in the near future, humanity can return to visit her again. To check in once more on our cosmic neighbor. A neighbor we humans are lucky to have.